Hi, welcome back, or welcome to Table Flipping Housewife. This is Amy. I have been in search for a very long time for a mid-century modern dresser just like this one. The piece is in pretty good shape. Now it has some dings as, as you would expect for a dresser that's been used for quite some time, but look at that hardware and the legs, beautiful. The front panel on the top drawers do have a laminate surface, but the rest of it is wood or wood veneer. I am psyched about getting to work on this, so let's get started. Now, as always, the first thing I need to do is to clean a piece. And in order to clean properly, you have to remove the hardware, which I like, so I'm saving. I cleaned it with a TSP alternative. I just sprayed it on and wiped it off. Now, I'm not a paper towel girl. I hate waste, but I've come to understand the beauty of using these disposable rags because otherwise you dip a dirty rag into your soapy water and you contaminate it. I then went ahead and vacuumed the inside, underside, inside out. Now I know at this point that I want to expose those legs and the top. So I'm going for a raw wood look for the top and legs and I'll be painting the rest. So I slathered on some chemical stripper and wrapped it up to keep that stripper from drying. I waited about 20 minutes before I unwrapped it and started scraping off what I could. There wasn't a lot that I could scrape off, but even removing that small amount makes sanding easier later. After scraping off what I could, I used an abrasive steel wool pad to scrape off what was left, and then also doused it with some mineral spirits. This not only helps you scrub off what still remains of the finish, but it also deactivates that stripper. Once they were thoroughly dried, I started to sand them by hand. Now you can see the rubber forms up in the upper right corner. I simply wrapped a piece of sandpaper around them to help me sand all the nooks and crannies of these feet. When the hand sanding was complete, I switched to my surf prep and put on a foam abrasive pad. It wraps around all those curves and it allowed me to give that last sanding to smooth all my hand sanding strokes out. Now the back leg was missing a chunk of wood. It did not compromise the structure of the piece, but I just didn't like the looks of it. I used Bondo to fill in that area. Then once it dried, I sanded it smooth with my rotary sander. And then finished by hand just to make sure that side is naturally curved. And look at that, I love Bondo. Then I was ready to strip the top. I used that same stripper and applied liberal amounts. That's the key. You need to use a lot of stripper. You wrap it up in plastic as I did before and give it time to work. And then I scraped it off. Very satisfying. And just like the front legs, I did use steel wool with some mineral spirits to remove all the excess gunk. A couple of days have passed. What I've done on the top so far is I sanded it with um, a 180 and then 220 and I did a lot of the 220 sanding by hand um, but I decided today to start sanding it one more time with my surf prep using a fine foam pad it's a little finer than 220 um, and as you can see from behind me the color is becoming even lighter so i'm going to finish doing this last sanding on the top and um, wipe it down and then i'm ready to put a paint wash on the feet and the top now i didn't know if my paint wash would have some bleed through so i applied 
two, if not three coats of shellac, lightly sanding and dusting in between each layer. And then it was time for me to mix up my paint wash. I used Fusion's Algonquin paint color and diluted it one part paint, four parts water. It's very liquidy as you'll see in just a moment. And the trick is to mist your piece with water to give you some more working time. You brush on the wash and then you wipe it off. And ideally, you would go in the direction of the wood grain, but in this case, that was impossible because of all the nooks and crannies. And now that they're dried, you can see what they'll look like. In the course of about five minutes, I've changed my mind twice. Let me tell you where I am. I put that paint wash on the feet. I'm not crazy about them. They have more of a shade of a grayish green than I like, but I'm just gonna leave them put for the time being. What I started to do was put a paint wash on the top, but as I feared, because I sprayed it with shellac, the wash wasn't adhering. So then I started to sand it off, thinking I'll me sand it down to raw wood again and do the paint wash. I'm not gonna do that because I'm already dealing with the challenge of the feet being a different wood than the top. I think I'm just gonna leave the feet raw, paint everything else. So I'm gonna wrap this feet up so that I can get busy starting to prime and paint. All right, I'm getting ready to prime. I've taped so that there will be no overspray of primer beyond the edge here. I also sanded a lot on the top and bottom of each drawer because once I prime and paint, I'm gonna be building up thickness, right? So I sanded some away so that it won't cause friction um, and thereby won't be scratching off and showing the white primer, at least in theory. All right, I've been using a very, very fine foam abrasive pad to lightly sand the top. It's not uncommon for spray primer to dry kind of feeling gritty, but one thing I'm noticing is that the wood grain is very prevalent on the top. And what I'll do to remedy that is I will mix up some water putty, very thin, and essentially paint it on. And when it dries, I'll sand it smooth and all that wood grain will be filled. At that point, I will put one more coat of primer or shellac on the top just to seal in that, that water putty, and then I'll be ready for paint. I'm using a paint new to me. I've been very intrigued with what I've heard about Benjamin Moore's Advanced Paint. I got it mixed in a beautiful color called Vintage Vogue. I filtered it into my Erlex 5500, diluted it with a little bit of water, and got busy spraying. All right, so this is the first coat. I remember the guy telling me not to be alarmed if it looked light in the can, that it would dry a lot darker. And I'm not too concerned about the spots that I've missed because I'll get those in the second coat. But I like this paint. It has very good coverage. Yeah. Now I'm going out of town tomorrow right after work for the weekend. So it was a perfect time to put on that first coat so I can let it cure as long as needed.
I just spot sprayed a third coat. Um, I do want to mention I did take a super, super fine grit sand pad and I lightly sanded the top and dusted it off between coats just to make sure that the top surface is nice and smooth. So this is done. It does not require a top coat. And for the first time, um, I feel confident in this particular paint. I've seen projects painted with it and I truly could not scratch the paint off. So um, I'm done. Tomorrow morning, I'll come out bright and early. I will unwrap those legs and see if I like the paint wash on it anymore. I think this is pretty much done other than putting the hardware on. I'm going to head inside and start cleaning the hardware. I never get tired of this. Cleaning hardware this way is so easy and so gratifying. They've already been boiling in equal parts water and vinegar and using an old toothbrush, look how much cleaner it gets. Beautiful. I then scrubbed it down with a little bit of Barkeeper's Friend. I had some brass already, didn't need to use it because after boiling it in the vinegar water mixture and scrubbing it down with Barkeeper's Friend, that's all I needed. Look at the difference. Amazing. And before wrapping everything up, I used Big Mama's Butter, which is a wonderful product by Dixie Bell. I ended up putting some on the runners to make it easier for the drawers to open and close, but I also nourished the wood of the drawers. Look how thirsty these are and how much better they look once treated with the Big Mama's Butter. So now for the most exciting part, look at how this beauty turned out. <laughs>